All right, this is uh, going to be the first video in a series of videos dealing with tubes, tube theory, and how they operate, how to bias them, the various different types of tubes, how they hook up in circuits, what circuits they make up. I thought about this for quite a bit. No talk on tube theory or anything can't go without some history and I thought I'd maybe throw some names out there and then I started remembering how controversial the early history is and so I'm not going to open that can of worms I will just talk about probably one name mainly because of one name of a particular tube but other than that I'm not going to really get into that can of worms and who invented what, who discovered what, when they discovered it or anything. It doesn't really matter. What matters is stuff was discovered. But early on we started out with a basically a light bulb and most of those had carbon filaments in them and it was noted that in those carbon filaments and light bulbs that on the glass envelope there would be deposits that would eventually show up well they pretty much surmised that that's coming from the filament but they wanted to understand it better so some experiments was done and several people probably did these in any case they ended up adding a plate an anode inside the tube in the light bulb and they applied a positive voltage to it and when they did they found that they would get a conduction of current a current flow so they surmised that due to the filament being hot in there it was releasing electrons and those electrons were heading to the plate because of the positive voltage there. Now their actual summation probably wasn't actual electrons although electrons at the time were known uh, they probably just thinking that it was just bits of carbon coming from the uh, filament but in any case they had a current flow and by the way that tube particularly where you have a filament or cathode uh, and a plate is a diode tube. Two elements, di for two, ode for electrodes, and those are used as rectifiers and detectors today, or in tube radios. A little bit later, it was determined that if you put another electrode in it, which turned out to be and actually historians pretty much believe from looking at some of the very old ones and originals that it was not more than just a piece of screen screen wire like you'd have on your screen on your windows which is probably what they used they probably just cut it out one person in particular played with this and that was Lee DeForce and the only reason I mention his name is because he called his an audion instead of triode and it would actually be more proper a triode because it has three elements as opposed to two but it also brought about amplification it was found that if we put a negative voltage on it and we varied that we could vary the current through the tube so that's how we ended up with the first amplifiers. Now, going beyond that, well, I'll, before I go on beyond that, I want to talk about some terminology. First and foremost, a filament. Because from now on, I'm going to be calling everything just a cathode. But a filament, if a tube only has just the filament, there's nothing else. Uh, there's no other metal plate in there then it is called the filament that is what's producing the electrons 
if there is a separate metal cathode then the filament now is called a heater and the other names you'll find for that is if you just have a filament then it's a directly heated cathode and if you have a cathode with a heater then it's indirectly heated but from this point on I'll just be calling them cathodes uh, and one other term I want to throw out there is how this is actually operating is a term of thermonic emission meaning that it takes heat to emit the electrons now a couple other things or one other thing is early on uh, in their infinite wisdom they were dealing with batteries uh, wasn't exactly had a lot of AC power out there and other types of supplies so the filament or the cathode the filament itself was labeled A A supply A battery when they applied a plus positive voltage to the plate and the supply for the plate they named it B or B battery or B supply and of course you guessed it for the grid voltage we called it C or C battery. Now, you really don't see too much of these two, or more, or more or less not too much of this one, but you will see this in battery operated. They'll have an A battery and a B battery. You also see B using considerably, even an AC power with B plus and stuff. But the main thing is, is I wanted to get these labels out here because as we talk about tube constants and stuff, they're going to be formulas and they're going to have sub letters B for anything that's in the plate, C for anything that's in the grid. Now, E is voltage. Don't let the E bother you. It just, E is used for electromotive force, which is voltage. So, uh, it's just a physics term and it's been used uh, a lot in electronic engineering. I is current, you can think of it as intensity. Now dealing with the triode, we can start talking about tube constants and how the triode actually works. We have a current flow that's going to go from the cathode to the plate when we supply a voltage. And that's just going to follow this circuit as a complete circuit. We can control that by the grid. Now the one thing I want you to realize about grid these here, the cathode and the plate is a straight flat or, well not flat but solid metal. The grid the very early ones was pretty much was a wire screen but the later ones would look something, and if I can draw this, something like this, you'd have two, a couple uprights, and one of those would go ahead and hook to the electrode tube, to a, a element going out of the tube here. But it would just have wire going around, and around, and around, and around. So it's extremely open what it actually does is when you apply a negative uh, voltage onto the grid with respect to cathode, and that's one thing I want is completely understood, everything is respect to this common point or the cathode. When that grid is negative then what it does is it builds up a negative charge on these wires. It's invisible but the electrons can sense it. Now, the more negative the grid is, the less flow electrons are here, so the less current. At a certain point, when that grid gets so negative, the tube shuts down, and that's cut, called cutoff. Now, there is a maximum amount of current that can go through a tube. Generally, you end up pumping the, the, the grid actually to, into the positive realm. And when you get to a certain point, 
the tube hits its maximum ability to pass current through. The maximum number of electrons can flow. At that point, it's called saturation. Most radios, virtually almost all radios and everything, don't ever go into saturation, but you do deal with cutoff. Now, there's got to be a way of dealing with all these variables and everything and some way to express the differences between this tube, some other tube, any other tube, you know, one triode to another to another. And that way is done with tube constants. Now tube constants, there are three. This is called mu, this is called plate resistance, and this is called mutual conductance or transconductance. Mu is amplification factor. Plate resistance with the little r is AC, resistance of the plate, or also known as impedance. GM we'll get into is, is the transconductance. Now mu is figured by a small change in our plate voltage with respect to a small change in our grid voltage as long as I keep the plate current constant. Now the actual definition states that a change in plate voltage of a certain amount will change the plate current a certain amount mu will be equal to what grid voltage it takes to keep the plate current constant which is kind of a over elaborate way the best way just to remember is is these two changes now delta which is these triangles just means small change we're dealing with AC so we're dealing with changes but basically what is what is being said here is what change in this voltage will keep the current constant with a change in plate voltage and actually what we're measuring as long as I keep the current constant if I change this voltage here there's going to be a certain change in this voltage and that put into the formula, the simple division will tell me mu or the application factor. This has nothing to do with gain. Amplifier gain or stage gain will always be a little less than mu due to the fact that we'll have a load resistor that's going to drop some, build some heat and drop some energy and lose some current and voltage but that's all mu, mu means and what you do is you can graph this out and look on a graph and figure it out all you're looking for is keeping your constant current and you can see a certain change in grid voltage and see what that change reflects in plate voltage do the division and you'll come out mu for every tube uh, definitely every triode in tube manuals they'll have a listing for mu. Now the other important thing about mu, mu is the only constant that for normal operation of a tube, of a triode, will stay constant or fairly constant and stable. It won't change. Now plate resistance is just that. It's just the resistance of the plate. And it's just figure with Ohm's law. And it's actually, which I didn't mark it down right, it's a change because it's AC. But a small change in plate voltage divided by a small change or a reference to a small change in plate current. Both are division problems, so all these are division. And that gives you the plate resistance. So you look at a change in your plate voltage and a change in your plate current, a, 
this will have a constant grid voltage and that will tell you what your plate resistance is. Which plate resistance under normal operation will change and be in constant flux. Mutual conductance or transconductance is a small change in plate current with respect to the small change in grid voltage. So in other words, how, when I, and this is held with uh, my plate voltage being constant, when I change this grid voltage, how much effect does it have on the plate current? And how effective is this tube at amplifying? So this is really, even though this is amplification factor, this is probably a, a better source of information. Now again, all three of these are in the tube manual, and they'll list them. And mu, how these all related is mu equals your transconductance multiplied by your plate resistance. Now. This changes also when the tube is in operation. It doesn't stay stable, neither does this. But as this goes down, this will go up. If this goes down, this will go up to keep mu fairly constant. Now, I'm going to probably cut off right here. Um, in the next one, we'll start talking about problems with a triode, how on what was done to fix those problems. So we'll be talking about tetrodes and pentodes and then we'll get into more how to use this information and what it means when, in design of a tube, tube amplifier and stuff. So until the next video, thanks for watching and thanks for your comments even though I don't get back to them real quick it, Sometimes I get pretty busy doing other things, so I, I want to thank you ahead of Vance. They're very kind, and I really do appreciate them. And thank you.